I prefer that we take church seriously and we act like adults. Good morning, everybody. I am Richard Contramundum, Richard Against the World. Uh, and we're going to be talking about some Furtick, Stephen Furtick, coming up next. All right. Good morning. How are you? Got my trusty sidekick. Coffee. Delicious. It's a K-cup. Sometimes I'll do K-cup. My wife has this little, you know, pre-made thing. Uh, you know, the cups, but then you can also make your own. Less plastic waste. I still prefer other methods of brewing, but it's fast and easy. Um, anyway, that's not why you clicked on this. Happy Ash Wednesday. Also not why you clicked on it, probably. Well, maybe. Uh, not Roman Catholic, not high church, so we don't really do Ash Wednesday as Baptist. I know non-denominational, evangelical, I don't think Presbyterians do it. Let me know, Dick, Jason, and uh, anybody else. I know i got a few Presbyterians um, in my circle. I don't think you guys do Ash Wednesday, though, either. Anyway, it's 40 days to Easter, Resurrection Day. Uh, and so, I think, right? Is that is it 40 days? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> See, we don't do it. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to be doing the forehead thing. But it would be good. I would at least encourage you, if you're thinking about giving up something, uh, to give it up. Maybe just do it privately as what fasting really should be uh, between you and the Lord. And, you know, give up something. Not something that's a sin, right? You don't want to, like, give up pornography. Like, you should just give that up anyway. Uh, or gossiping or something. But rather, you know, whether whatever it is. So, Stephen Furtick. Stephen Furtick. He is probably got the best haircut as far as the hipster cool guy is concerned I've ever seen. He's always ripped. He's always got like the tight beard. I'm a little jealous. Probably why I'm doing this video. You know, that's what skeptics will say. Uh, <laughs> scoffers, whatnot. But no, Stephen Furtick, he actually went to the same seminary, Southern Seminary, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He doesn't brag about that very much. I don't even think it's on their website anymore. But he did. Um... And it's funny, you can go back to like six, seven, eight years ago, Stephen Furtick. He's also got like no beard. He looks so like a freaking weirdo. He looks like Chris Angel, I think, a guy, like a magician, you know, street magician, all hip and cool. He just looks like misunderstood. And you're like, what are you doing, man? Now he now now he's got his groove. One video, and you might have seen this. But I want to address this because it's something that we think like, yeah, that sounds good, right? And it's like, but is it? Is that really what's going on? Let's just watch this, and we're going to address it with some scripture. We're going to be against it, but for his sake. Now, he knows better. At this stage in the game, you know better. Um, all the guys at this level, they know better, right? It's like it's like the professional baseball player. Like Those are like the best guys of the best of the best, right? Like They didn't just make the all-star team when they were in seventh grade, like they played all through high school and they were all state. And then they got drafted, maybe went to college, like they played triple A ball, like, and even that, and those are like the bench guys in the MLB, right? And then to exceed there, excel there, you really got to be just talented. So Furtick's very talented. I'll give him that. Uh, he knows what he's doing is my point. So let's play this and we'll see. And the process of discipleship is not God changing you into something else. It's Him revealing who you've been all along. Okay. It's not Him changing you, but revealing who you really are. Who you really are. Now, it's possible. We're not going to watch the whole sermon. Maybe you've seen more of this. But the pro the problem is, like, if this was said by, you know, just a random schmo and I found it, you know, sermon clips, some woke preacher clip dot com uh, or whatever. Uh, he's got a channel on here on YouTube. Great channel if you don't know it. Uh, if it was just that or a one off thing. OK, sure. You know, MacArthur says something weird. Paul Washer, Vody Bauckham. You're like, huh? You know, Piper or something like that. Somebody like that. But like you have Andy Stanleys and others, Furdicks and, and TD Jakes and these guys that you're like, they say stuff off the wall every sermon, multiple times sometimes in a sermon. 
so it's a pattern, right? Like, yeah, that, so I've, I've studied this a little bit. I haven't dug too deep into it, but there's a lot of patterns and things you see within the mega churches, right? These cool guy, hipster, amphitheater, concert style churches. Now, again, I, I have personally no problem with it. I don't think it's good. I'm not going to say it's sinful, though, right? Because there's no real evidence of that in the scripture. And that would just be, quote unquote, fundamentalist and silly. I prefer a solid pulpit. I prefer pews or chairs. I prefer people to wear nicer clothes. I prefer that we take church seriously and we act like adults. Again, you could wear this. It's fine. But the question is, why are you wearing this? Or why are you dressed like that? I mean, whatever. Now, the problem is, you know, you have a lot of the heretics. You've got the Kenneth, Kenneth Copelands and the others of the world. Uh, Creflo Dollar, these guys who dress in fancy su suits, right? So a suit and a tie, that doesn't make you. Just like, you know, a t-shirt and ripped shorts don't make you either. Point is, Furtick employs a lot of the same stuff. The clapping, right? The, uh, and it's always about like, yeah, you, 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 I'm going to, uh, you, I'm going to release it. I'm going to have this. You're going to be, it. it's going to be so good. We're just going to be. And I was looking at I was looking at some stuff with I don't think I'll do the video because I just probably won't. But Craig Groeschel, if you know him, Life Church. Again, you listen to some of these sermons, and you're like, yeah, I mean, you know, that's that sounds pretty good. But it's all on practice. It's all on your life. It's all on how how do I defeat this? How do I change that? How do I fix my whatever? And in one sense, we all want that, right? But that's not the only reason why you go to church. It's not just a self help seminar. It's not just some boost to your ego. Now, it should have practical implication. If you're only doing a history lesson, I don't think you're doing it justice. But we need to know what's going on in the text. We need to know what what was meant for Israel or, or the New Testament church or what's Paul talking about or how did John mention these things or why would Luke write these things down in Acts or his gospel? These things matter. And how they look at church history how the church has understood these things. But so often people pretend like we just started church like in the year 2002 and we're just like getting going. It's all about me and overcoming fear and, you know, defeating your, your addiction to porn. Scarcely will you see any words like heaven or hell, redemption, forgiveness, maybe forgiveness, uh, sin, all these like kind of faux pas, bad, like, whatever uh, we're talking about. And that's what attracts people, right? Because ultimately, they're just trying to get seekery. Now, this is like super seeker sensitive in the 90s. Um, or like kind of like the grandparents of or the parents of this now, you know, Craig Groeschel and, and Stephen Furtick and many other kind of cool guy, Michael Todd out in Oklahoma. Anyway, he's saying, oh, revealing who you really were. Well, the problem with that is you're lying. You're, you're just lying. Steve, Isaiah 64, 6, all of us have become like one who is unclean. All our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Yeah, right? Doesn't really square. You're not really going to be hearing that from Furtick's lips. Colossians 3, 5, and 6, put to death. Listen to that language. It's war. We are at war, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not a believer in Christ, listen close, please. This is about Jesus. It's not about preferences and clothes and denominations and which type of Bible you have and you know how much sin you can get away with. No, it's about the Lord Jesus Christ coming into the world to save sinners, to, to, to wash people clean and have communion and relationship with him. He is the one who lived and died. You deserve to die. You do. I do. We deserve death. But by grace, we are saved through faith in him. And we don't have to take that death. Because of his love towards us while we were sinners, he died for us. Jesus did. He says, take my yoke. It's easy. It's light. I care for you. Repent. Bow the knee because you're going to bow it eventually. But in death, 
If you've not bowed it here, you will be forced to. As the kings of old who were defeated were defeated by their kings, they still had to bow down, but it wasn't pretty. Colossians 3, 5, put to death, therefore, what belongs to your earthly nature. But Stephen's talking about your earthly nature. It's just inside you the whole time. By golly, you know, there's just a little spark of divinity in there. Just, just getting in. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Not going to hear about wrath from Furtick's lips. And one of my favorites, 1 John 1, 8 and through 10. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. You want to make God a liar? I don't, <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that at all. <laughs> not at all. If we say, notice how he says, if we say we don't have sin, implying you do have sin. So quit the act. You have sin. I have sin. Your mom has sin. Your sister has sin. Your neighbor, your coworker, your pastor. Y'all got sin. We all do. Right? But notice it's just, Jesus is so much better than this self-help bull crap. So much better. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from most of our unrighteousness. I mean, how good is... Some of you are like, wait, what? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from almost all of our unrighteousness. No. No. All of our unrighteousness. All of it. It's filthy rags, Isaiah says. Right? It's very popular verse, put to death your flesh because the wrath of God is coming. And on top of all that, the very same God that is bringing his wrath is the very same God that you are saved to serve through Christ. All you're doing is acknowledging the white flag and saying, I can't do that. The flag of surrender goes up and you say, I can't do this. And then he empowers you. He saves you. You are born again to a living hope. And when you are, and those of us who are, you know the difference. You know your passions, your desires are dying. They're falling. They're going away. Not this revealing what we really are. Yet what we really are is bigger sinner. I'll tell you, the more I live, the longer and bigger. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm such an idiot. I was so stupid. I was such a wicked sinner. How many times? I can't believe. And just the stuff I used to do as a teen and in my 20s, my BC days, was just like, ah, oh, it's just gags. And I pray that you feel that too. I pray that there is a BC distinction. And if not, ask yourself, why? Why is that? Why? I hope you found this helpful. I do. I really do. Uh, thank you for taking some time and hanging out with me for a little bit. It's fun. Um, trying to do these shows on Wednesdays and Fridays. I might drop one tomorrow on Thursday as well. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of things I just don't get to. Each week, there's like three or four other things that I want to talk about. We're going to be talking about some ERLC, Ed Litton, and uh, Fred Luter, and some other SBC people. Um, although I'm, I want to do a collab with a couple people, so I might do a video and then do something else with somebody else. Or I might just do the whole collaboration together. Anyway, uh, if you found this helpful, like I said, like it and share and comment. Uh, tell me where you're from. I've had a lot of new subs lately. Lots of, um, it sometimes will pop up a name. Not always. I'm not going to drop anybody's name. I'm sure, you know, you probably wouldn't care, but just in the essence, since nobody's told me I could or couldn't just tell me if you wouldn't mind, Hey, I'm a new subscriber looking forward to it, or thanks for this or, you know, whatever. Uh, and I like knowing where people are from, you know, you don't have to put your address down, but let me know where you're from. Texas, wherever. It's the only state, right? <laughs> now, I'm in Kentucky. Uh, I'm in a small town in Kentucky, kind of Midwestern Kentucky. And yeah, life's good. God's been good to us. I'm married and I've got four children and I'm pastoring a small uh, SBC church now. So 
Don't let that scare you. I've had a few people like, oh, well, you're in that Baptist pastor. You're in this. Well, yeah, that was enough for me not to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. If you want to check out my website uh, or the church's website, rather, is newharvestbaptist.org as well, newharvestbaptist.org. I've got some sermons there, and you can see video uh, sermons there. Read our statement of faith and that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, you all have a good day. Uh, praise God this day. Be thankful. This is the day he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Until then, we'll see you next time. But before we do, before I do, be against the world for the sake of the world. See ya. Everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. Good morning. My name is Richard, and I'm Richard Contramundum. Coming up next. I don't like any of that. I don't like any of that. We're just going to keep going. Take two, take two, take two.